Good morning dear friends and praise the Lord and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Again it is my privilege to be with you for these few minutes of meditating God's word on the second day of this new week and as you begin your life today and the rest of the days of this week may the Lord's guidance be upon you and may the Lord's instruction be your strength. Our today's meditation is centered around 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21. And the title is Christ suffered follow in his footsteps. He called all his disciples to follow him by saying follow me. And Peter was one of the first of the disciples who left everything and followed Jesus. After following about 30 to 35 years and ministering and establishing and encouraging believers, he suffered martyrdom by the hands of Nero, the emperor. At that time, a terrible persecution was going on against Christians and Christianity. And uh, Peter was crucified and on his own request, they crucified him upside down, saying, I am unworthy to die in the same pose as my master and Lord died. So crucify me upside down so that I can kiss my master's feet and die. And he wrote his epistles before early 64. And this is what he wrote in his first letter. Chapter 2, verse 21. It says, To this you were called, because Jesus suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. The highest privilege and glory of any believer is to suffer for Christ and the gospel's sake. And I pray that as we meditate on this, our fears of suffering, persecution, or any other opposition will be vanished. In suffering, believer follow the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Read Isaiah 53, the whole chapter. No one can equal the suffering that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went through in order to bring to us the greatest and the highest of all the blessings, even redemption through his blood and eternal life. What a blessing that money cannot buy. No one else could do it. But Jesus, by paying the price, for our redemption, he suffered. For this reason, the apostles rejoiced when they were first persecuted, recorded in the uh, book of Acts chapter 5. And read especially verse 41. The apostles left the Sanhedrin and returned to other disciples. And they rejoiced because they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. That's what it says. And uh, it says here, therefore, since suffered in his body, arm yourself also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is done away with sin. This is recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 25. In his letter to the Philippians, in uh, chapter 3, Apostle Paul says, I want to know Christ and the fellowship of his suffering To attain 
this, he considered everything that was again to the Apostle Paul he, as rubbish and thrown them away. Consider them as loss. For the sake of Christ, are you willing to suffer for Christ and for the gospel's sake? Read also after this meditation, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. And I want to say this to you therefore as a first point. Considering all these verses, Christians must be willing to suffer for Jesus Christ. If you are a true Christian, and confess that you are a follower of Jesus Christ and a worshipper of Jesus Christ. That you must be willing to follow the example of Jesus Christ who suffered for our sake. He didn't have to suffer it for himself. He didn't have to die for himself because he was divine. He was God. He was sinless. He was perfect. But this perfect and sinless divine person from heaven took upon himself a human body and lived in that body about 33 and a half years and then gave that body to be broken and the blood to be shed and in doing so the suffering he went through is beyond description my friends you and I can never comprehend that a divine person suffering to that extent for us who were actually his enemies. So a true Christian must be willing to suffer. As Apostle Paul says in Philippians, I want to know Christ and then I want to enter into a fellowship with him and also a fellowship with his suffering. And Apostle Paul, therefore, is expressing there his willingness to suffer as a follower of Jesus Christ. Are you willing to suffer? And the second thing I want you to know is, suffering for Christ is called suffering according to God's will. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 19 And it is also said to be a suffering for his name. Acts chapter 9 verse 16. It is also said to be for suffering for what is right. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 14. And suffering for the kingdom of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. Please read these verses after this meditation. Suffering for Christ is actually suffering according to God's will. So you want to do the will of God, don't you? And then persecutions and suffering is a promise along with eternal life. Anyone who wants to be godly will be persecuted. That's what the scripture says. So you must not cringe from having the privilege of suffering for Christ. There is a very, very special reward in heaven waiting for those who suffer for the sake of the gospel. And the third thing I want you to know about suffering is suffering for Christ is a means of arriving at spiritual maturity. You know, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. To obtain God's blessing. Let us read from Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. Chapter 2, verse 10 of Hebrew. 
He says, in bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Even Jesus Christ was made perfect through his obedience. Obedience to what? Obedience to the death, even death on the cross. That is in Philippines. And so remember this, my friends. To obtain God's blessing. But, you know, the, the, the suffering actually is a means. Let me repeat it. Of arriving at spiritual maturity. First Peter chapter 4 verse 14. To obtain God's blessing. And suffering enables one to minister life to others. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 10 to 12. Please write down these references and read. Suffering for Christ is a necessary step for our being glorified with Christ. It is in Romans chapter 8 verse 18. There Apostle Paul says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And so suffering for Christ is a necessary step for being glorified with Christ. You know, when Christ returns, we shall meet him and we shall be glorified in Jesus. So whenever suffering comes, instead of looking at the suffering, the one way of uh, uh, being strengthened is immediately remember the glory that is waiting for you. In this sense, it can be uh, regarded as a precious gift from God. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. Let us look into that passage. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 says, For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, please take note of it, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. That is, it is granted to you, it is given to you, the privilege of not only believe in him, but also to suffer for Christ. It is a precious gift from God. And the fourth thing about suffering is, fourth thing to note is, in living for Christ, suffering should not be sought after, but the believers must be willing to undergo it joyfully out of devotion to Jesus Christ. Nobody, sought, nobody must seek after suffering. You purposely go and cause suffering uh, by doing foolish things. That is not what it means. But, in case if it comes, persecution suddenly comes, opposition suddenly comes, instead of being afraid of, count it as a privilege. It is for various other blessings that is awaiting you for eternity. Hallelujah! And therefore, Suffering will put you in a special category of, 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 of uh, uh, people who arrived in heaven to be with Jesus forever. My friends, suffering will never destroy the church. 
persecution will never destroy the church but what destroys the church is the inside diseases of divisions and and and, and pride and arrogance and stubbornness and disobedience to god so if the devil knows that external persecution will not cause the church to be reduced to nothing but it will only increase look at the study the history of china or any other persecuted greater nation you will find that the church only grows in the fire of persecution so here is the privilege that you and i have we don't go after seeking persecution or torture but in case if it comes what will be our response by the grace of god we will be enabled to suffer for christ because that means we are following the footsteps of jesus christ god's blessing be upon you my friends god is with you today and to offer yourself to god as a living sacrifice to god may the lord bless you and keep you today this is a wonderful day go ahead and live it and have a good day father i thank you for the listeners of this short meditation grant to us your grace o lord and your presence that is all we ask enabling us to suffer for you thank you for hearing us in jesus name amen